What's up, Internet? <clears throat> got to call up work again because uh, apparently we live in the freaking Arctic Circle. Some negative 10, something like that, wind chill out, so we got the day off. Thought I'd make a quick video, share out this helmet camera some more, and <clears throat> today I'm going to have a little discussion about groundwork, and more specifically, the, the importance of being a great groundsman in the pursuit of learning how to climb. You know, it seems like everyone wants to be the cutter, the, you know, the guy in the bucket, the guy climbing. It's certainly more glamorous and exciting, um, as opposed to like the tedious and seemingly meaningless stuff that you do on the ground. And I'm talking about like raking and dragon brush and lifting big ass logs and chipping, all that. I remember when I decided I wanted to climb, I was I was 19. I had been, you know, brush bitch for got almost two years and I was just getting sick of working the ground. I and mean, I was told over and over again by foremen and other climbers that in order to be a proficient climber you have to be a master of the ground. You just be a master groundsman. It's actually one fellow I worked with named Reggie who uh, he told me, I want you to be so good at working the ground that you're scary good. And, uh, yeah, I, I just didn't understand th this idea, like, at all. I was like, what does picking up sticks and raking and shit like that have to do with climbing? And so to the inexperienced person, it's easy to miss why having a solid set of skills as a groundsman is essential to being a skilled climber. And it wasn't until recently in my career that I started to understand and truly grasp this concept so I just wanted to throw a few handfuls of uh, reasons some justifications why I think one can only be a great climber until you have developed proficiency during ground operations so when you work the ground you learn a lot of important things you, you learn to develop a plan to complete a job you learn about material management, where to put vehicles, uh, routes for machines, uh, where the, where should the porter app be set in the tree, uh, task sequencing, how to work with a team, the proper use of a chainsaw, of other tools, personal protective equipment, and so on. These are all basic, you know, tree care things you learn how to do on the ground. You also learn about timing, about being attentive, about being vigilant, being aware of hazards. Uh, who is where, who is doing what, what happens next. And you learn how to communicate with the members of your team and how teamwork dynamics work. Um, you learn how to best utilize each other to make jobs and the tasks run smoothly and safely. So with this in mind, you can see how your ground skills and the mindset you have on the ground can correlate to the mindset you have when you're in a tree or in a bucket. So, just like a groundsman, a climber must also develop a plan. Let's say, you know, you're rigging something. Where are you going to put your blocks? Where are the lines going to go? Uh, you know, you have to route where you're actually going to be, where your tie is going to be. You have all these things to pay attention to. You need to make a plan. Uh, a climber must also use teamwork to complete jobs. I, it's incredibly important to communicate with people on the ground when you're in a tree. It's for safety, one, and just so everyone has a heads up what the plan is and what's going on. Because when you're climbing or in the bucket, you're basically running the show. And lastly, and I think most importantly, a climber, just like a groundsman, must be able to see a holistic picture of what needs to be done in order to finish a job safely and in a timely manner. So what I didn't understand when I was just starting to climb was... <laughs> By working the ground for all these years, I was able to build up my basic skills while not having to struggle with learning how to climb at the same time. Because when you first start out, it, climbing is is hard. It, it's, it feels unnatural and it's, uh, it's physically exhausting. So it's like, imagine being a new climber and being sent up in a tree with zero chainsaw experience. It's probably not gonna go well, you're probably, you know, piss your pants or cut yourself, cut your rope, whatever. So, with that being said, learning and developing proficiency with the simple stuff on the ground allowed me to focus on how to climb. 
So when you're not when you're that new, being able to focus base like solely on your basic climbing skills, the the, the dynamics involved, rather than a whole bunch of stuff at once, uh, it makes the learning process a lot easier, and I I would say it makes it a lot less nerve wracking too. So I have two stories I want to share to just kind of illustrate what I mean. I was climbing this uh, this spruce tree. Uh, last June, I think it was, and 25 inches at the base, the highest cut in to make was 55 feet up, and uh, so I skinned it up, removed all the brush, uh, got the top out, rigged it out, rigged out two big logs, and then got to the point where my 14 inch bar on my saw was just not cutting it anymore, I needed to call for a bigger saw, so called up, got the husky in the tree, and on my second to last piece, piece that I got to block down, and I start to just realize how sore and exhausted I was after just two hours of climbing this tree and lifting and angling the saw to make cuts. And although I was comfortable, you know, cutting notches and making cuts proper, I realized how thankful I was for the time I had spent on the ground. Because if I hadn't practiced making notches and properly cutting with a saw safely, I don't think I would have been able to overcome the physical exhaustion to, to do that properly. I mean, that tree really took a lot out of me. Uh, one more story. Uh, as a groundsman, so you learn how to use a porter wrap, how to how many wraps take by looking at a piece in a tree, uh, when to let pieces run, so on and so forth. So last fall, I'm in this uh, cottonwood tree between two houses. It's like, it's actually a row of them. And they're the type of trees where they were small and skinny. You know, this one I was in was 18, 20 inches, but it was like, 70 80 feet tall because it was uh, surrounded by a bunch of other trees that were all competing for sunlight <laughs> so it was I'm at the top of this tree and I'm rigging out everything and at a certain point I'm I'm left with no tie-in because I had to cut that out and now I'm just on this pole with a top in it so I put the block below what I'm cutting made my notch and uh, tied it off and I was super uncomfortable because I wasn't able to triangulate with my climbing line anymore so I was like kind of shaking my knees and the trees moving around and shit. It's it's making me a bit nervous because I'm, you know, my work position's not I, 100% awesome, comfortable. So pieces tied off, groundsman tensions up the line, takes a wrap, and then I make my back cut. And he stopped that piece and totally snubbed it off, like right when it got below my feet. And it slammed me into that tree. It knocked the wind out of me. And it jerked me around all over the place, and it just totally freaking hurt. It was I was furious too. I've never been so mad. But after having worked with really good rope men and really, you know, piss poor rope men, you start to gain appreciation for that particular skill set and those people. And it's not fun getting slammed when you're dropping the top, and then. You know, it goes over and all of a sudden it disappears and it's like you don't feel anything. It's awesome. You start to just really put things in perspective, how important that role is. And you start to value the time you spend on the ground for that very reason. So when you're new and you're impatient like I was, it's hard to fully grasp this concept. You know, why groundwork is so essential to being a successful climbing arborist. And what I've found that the more time I spend in trees, it really drives this point home even further. Why every role in a tree crew is important. And that's why putting new guys in trees can help, you know, make them better groundspeople. You know, sometimes you don't realize these lessons until you're put into new situations. So with all that being said, uh, my mindset has completely changed about doing groundwork nowadays. And so... Some days, hell, even some full weeks, I'm I'm stuck in the ground. It's, and uh, instead of complaining and bitching about, you know, having to do bitch work, and I try my hardest to be the best grounds guy that I can be. And I do it because the guy in the tree, the guy in the bucket, that they're counting on me to be their right hand man. You know, to be mindful of potential dangers and what the next step is, what equipment needs to be prepped. A climber is pretty much screwed without a good 
solid crew on the ground supporting him. I, I read this quote somewhere. It said, groundsmen are the backbone of the tree care industry, and I honestly couldn't agree more. So, And uh, to every badass ninja tree climber out there, it's, yeah, you're awesome, and you're cool, and you're a superhero with your chain saber, but when your feet hit the ground, you're no longer a climber. You're a groundie again. The tree's done, but the job, I mean, the tree's on the ground, but the job is not done. So go ahead and take five minutes and grab some water, grab a smoke, catch your breath, but when you're done, grab a rake, and we're going to put this job in the books. You're not just, like, the talent, and you can't just go sit in the truck because your job is done, and you're above groundwork. You're part of a team, and uh, there's something profound about that. It's something, you know, to be cherished and, uh, and respected. Alright, that's all I gotta say about that, so just thought I'd post a little vid because I have nothing else to do today. Because it's freaking penguin weather outside, so. Anyway, have a good one, guys. Bye.